After hitting the speed bump of the doldrums, the five Amoka yachts competing in the ocean race are now eating up the miles on the race south to Cape Town. Defying conventional wisdom that says west is best for a doldrums crossing, Guide Environment Team Europe is holding a slender lead built on sailing less miles since the start via an easterly position compared to the rest of the fleet. Now it's a race to the south. All of the boats are enjoying southeast winds in the 12 to 18 knot range. On the hunt to make up miles is the fifth place team Malaysia, with sailor Rosalind Kuiper saying she's happy to be back in the trade winds, sailing fast, and looking for opportunities to get back in touch. We're still behind the others. In the doldrums the western side wasn't too favourable. So that was hard, Kuiper said. But at the moment, we have 18 knots of breeze and a true wind angle of about 0.85 degrees, so this is really good conditions for us. But we feel a little bit limited by the foil alarms, so we're trying to find the right mode and make sure we don't damage the foils. It's frustrating because we know there is more potential and speed in the boat. We will keep on pushing. One day can make a big difference in the ocean race. In fact, just a few hours can turn what had been a winning hand into something doubtful. That's been the case for Guide Environment Team Europe, who gambled on an easterly lineup for the doldrums and appeared to have made a big gain in the process. But just a couple days after escaping the clutches of the light winds around the equator, the Guide Environment Team found itself under a tricky, local weather vent that has seen them sailing much slower than their opposition for most of Thursday morning the UTC. While all of the fleet is slowing from the champagne trade wind conditions of the past 24 hours, none have been impacted more than Guide Environment Team Europe, who appear to have run out of luck in the east. We have had to make some big maneuvers in the past hours. We changed the head sail from J0 and J3 to the J2 to sail with it for a few hours, Sebastian Simon reported from on board. We are fighting, we are fighting for every mile, added skipper Robert Stanjek. According to Simon, the problem is the long arm of the ST. Helena High an area of light winds directly between the fleet and Cape Town. The ST. Helena High is the reason the fleet is racing south so close to the coast of Brazil, rather than down the African coast or on a more direct, shorter route to Cape Town. The distance the high-pressure system extends out from Africa into the South Atlantic changes constantly, at the moment guide environment appears to be on the edge of the light patch. Although the tracker, as of 1300 UTC, is still showing a slender lead to Stanjek and his crew, that's based more on their closer distance to Cape Town than the tactical reality of the race, where it appears Team Holsimpia B, as the most subtly positioned boat, is the leading contender. Sailor Tom LaPerche says his team is focused on sailing fast and getting the most out of the conditions. It's good conditions to go fast in an Amoka. We are reaching wind across the side of the boat. The wind is still good, but it is decreasing a bit now. It is going to keep decreasing and shifting behind us. So we will be more downwind for the next days. It's warm too. Every team in the chasing pack biotherm, 11th hour racing team and team Malzia is hopeful that as the wind eases and shifts, so too does the advantage to those further west. The next 48 hours will reveal it all. Leg 2 rankings at 1300 UTC, the 2nd of February 2023. 1. Guide Environment Team Europe, distance to finish, 2986.5 miles. 2. Team Holson PRB, Distance to lead, 3.5 miles. 3. Biotherm, distance to lead, 38.3 miles. 4. 11th hour racing team, distance to lead, 80.7 miles. 5. Team Malaysia, distance to lead, 168.1 miles. What's your breakfast again? So I have a coconut granola. It's uh, very nice. And I put a little bit of nuts, chia seeds, honey and cinnamon. And 
then a uh, good start of the day. Mmm. Mm. Yummy. Now wait five minutes and then it's good to go. Good morning. Starboard foil to get all the way to Cape Town, so uh, it's very important we look after it. A bit annoying because we're not even pushing the boat super hard at the moment. We're sailing quite conservative because we're worried about the foils already, and we're sailing slower than the others. But um, yeah, no problems on the boat. So will you talk to the shore team? Yeah, we're just chatting with them, seeing if there's anything we can do, anything we can inspect to make sure it's not anything worse. Um, no, but it's good that we can message them and uh, and check what they think about it and, um, and kind of have their opinion on it. So, they're just annoying.
21 3 pour euh, Rio. So, uh, yeah, we're here with the Ocean Pack, which is uh, on board, constantly running, taking water samples, uh, but every now and then we just got to check that, uh, that the data coming off this thing is good. So, uh, periodically we're going to take uh, water samples, so we've got a second water sample for this leg, and then this will get sent off to a lab, and, uh, and they'll be able to check that the instrument's actually reading correctly, just to make sure all the data on board is, uh, is good. So we just got to uh, fill this little bottle up, few times. Make sure there's no contamination. Right, so that should be good. A little bit out. Then we've got to take care not to touch the top because obviously we've got pretty salty hands on board and we don't want to uh, Contaminate the sample. But there we go, second uh, second water sample of uh, leg two, Cabo Verde to uh, Cape Town to go to the lab. So yeah, we carry this uh, this ocean pack here on board um, 11th hour racing, and uh, as I was saying before, it runs 24/7, uh, just taking water samples constantly as we uh, as we sail around the globe. Uh, it's recording some some important, interesting data, things like. Uh, Salinity of the sea surface dissolves CO2 and then obviously the sea surface temperature as we go around and then that all that information can be fed back into a, a much broader data set which gives us really important information on uh, on the ocean, the climatology and, uh, and this data also can be used in, in things like weather modelling and, and what have you. So essentially, uh, you know, for us we're getting important data for the science community, but we're also sort of helping ourselves by uh, generating better weather information and, and, and that sort of stuff as well. So, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a small uh, small job to carry this through for a big benefit. Array of pumps and filters, and in, in various stages, there's various different sensors. So then that can uh, give all the important data on, on things like the salinity, the temperature, how much CO2 is in the water. You can see there's a big gas bottle on the other side, which is also part of uh, keeping the instrument calibrated. But then that water travels through and then uh, literally passes back out the other side and back into the sea. So uh, it's quite cool when you see, when you can go online afterwards and see your data set uploaded. And you, you see your track of the race course and then uh, and all that important information along the way. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a clever little thing. <laughs> So now they got this uh, water sample to compare with uh, compare in the lab, and if everything lines up in the lab, we know the data on board is uh, is all good. It can go into the into the wider data set. So uh, yeah, good. A little bit of science on board. Thank <laughs> you. 